The use of a simple conditional statement in a script is one way that a script can be programmed to provide rich and sophisticated functionality, responding differently in different situations. Another type of condition that's a useful part of the scripting toolset is the ability to have a script loop, that is, repeat a sequence of steps until a condition is met. Let's take a look at a simple example of the use of looping. Suppose we've delivered this script to the users and they like it, but it turns out that they'd prefer that the active record when they go to the author's listing layout is the same record they were looking at in the form layout. At the moment, the last step in the script, go to record request page first, is always taking the user to the top of the listed records in the author's listing layout. For the second group of steps, simply deleting that last step, the go to record request page step, would be sufficient to leave the record that was active on the author's layout as the active record on the author's listing layout. But not so for the first group of steps. Because the conditional steps that use the go to related record commands are effectively filtering the records through relationships, the original context, and therefore the information about which record was active, will be lost. And I'll need to set up the script to reinstate it. One way to do that is to use a loop at the end of the first group of commands, those that precede the else step. So, first of all, I'll insert the loop by double clicking on the loop step. As with the if step, the loop step comes with an end loop command, which signifies the end of the looping sequence. And a loop also requires some method by which the loop will be exited. Otherwise, the script would simply pass around the loop indefinitely. In this case, I'll use the exit loop if step to allow me to specify the condition when the script will exit the loop. Now, I want the script to move through the records, exiting the loop when the previously active record is reached. So first of all, at the top of the group of steps, I need to capture the active record before the filtering occurs, which will lose the information about which record was active. So in this case, I'm going to use the set variable step to store the ID of the active record. So I'll call the variable ID. Notice that all variable names start with either a single or a double dollar sign. And I'll click the specify button next to the value field and choose the author ID as the value to set into the variable. So now at the top of the sequence, we're grabbing the author's author ID and placing it into a variable called ID. Now, after the filtering through two go to related record steps, I can then test to see if the author ID matches the ID that was captured originally. So my test will be that the variable ID equals the author ID on the current record. So if the first record is in fact the record that was active previously, the script will go into the loop and immediately exit. However, if it doesn't exit at this point, I'll need it to navigate to the next record in the list so that the test can be performed there. So I'll choose go to record request page, next. And just in case the script reaches the end of the available records, Without finding the active record, I'll choose Exit After Last, and that'll ensure that the script continues regardless. The only circumstance that springs to mind where the active record would not be found would be if the database was being used by multiple users simultaneously, and another user had deleted the active record while the script was running. That's a fairly unlikely circumstance, but it does no harm to account for that possibility. Now that I have a sequence here which will navigate to the active record after the filtering of records, I also need to delete the go to record request page first step that sits at the bottom of the script currently. So I'll select it and click the clear button. Now let's see if the script works as intended. I'll close the script after saving it. And let's do some testing. First of all, from Arthur Kersler's record, if I select the view authors listing script, You'll notice that we're now viewing all 21 records in the author's listing layout, and the active record is indeed Arthur Kersler. If I return to the author's layout, hold the shift key down and select the view author's listing script again, only the three records for authors who have one or more books published by Penguin Books are on display, 
And again, you'll notice that the Arthur Kersler author record is the active record after the script is run. So in this case, the script is nonlinear. It has a conditional sequence at the top and a separate conditional sequence at the bottom, either of which will run, depending on whether the condition set in the first step is met or not. And then the script will repeat the loop sequence, stepping forward one record with each pass through the loop until the exit condition is met at which point the script is able to escape the loop. So the script, in fact, will be of variable length, depending on how many records the script needs to step through to arrive at the record which was originally the active record at the point when the script starts. There are, of course, many other uses for conditional script sequences. Both if commands and loops can be used to create scripts that respond dynamically to a variety of situations, delivering predictable results in unpredictable circumstances.